Oh, praise the Lord, you saints. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise yes, His name Lord. as He brought us back to the place today. Can we uplift His name today? Uplift Him in your situation. Uplift Him in your circumstances. Uplift Him in your home. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's open our eyes today that we might see Him today in all that we are doing. All Open up our minds and all that we are thinking. Open up our yes, hearts. Lord. And all that we are believing in today, and we most importantly open up our souls to Him today. Let us see the living yes. and the Savior and all. And can we do that today? Yes, Lord. Has He been good to you today? Has He been better than good to you? Yes. Matter of fact, has He been great to you today? Just getting you onto the other side of whatever it is and whatever it was. But just know that as we see our beloved Jesus Christ today, as we Feel his anointing today as we receive a touch from him all the way from heaven today. Let us know that we are delivered today. Yes. Delivered from whatever it is mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever it is. Yes, Lord. We are delivered from it. But the question is, are you willing to be delivered to him yes, today? Lord. He's reaching out to us today. He's reaching out. Heart, mind, body, and soul. Can we receive him today? Yes, Just take Lord. a few moments to talk about how great Lord. Lord is today. How great yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How great your restoration. How great your redeemer. How great your strength is. Now, if it had not been for him, we wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. But glory to God. He sent us a benevolent advocate. A wonderful advocate. Hallelujah. Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone weak today, he's breathing in him. Anyone despondent, have joy in him today. Anyone lost, look to him today. For his life is glorious. His life is warming. And his life is fulfilling to get yes, all the Lord. way back to this place. Yes, Lord. But in his place is healing. In his yes, place is deliverance. In his place, most is love. So let us see Jesus today. Yes, Lord. Can you go with me to the word Yes, today? Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we're bragging about our Lord today. But I'm reminded of his greatness here when it talks in the Psalms here in Psalms 103. It tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in thee, within me. Bless his holy name. Yes, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all. There's yes, that word again, Lord. all. All his benefit, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Yes, who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth yes, is renewed yes, like the eagle. Thank you, Lord. Anyone renewed today? Yes. Anyone strengthened in the might of his glory today? Anyone equipped and empowered and encouraged today? For you know that you know that you know that the Most High God has sent his blessed son, his only begotten son, that yes, we might Lord. be saved. Now, I, I got it. I got it. You say, well, we talk about this every week, but faith comes by hearing yes, and hearing Lord. the word of God. Yes, He's Lord. bigger than it. Insert dot, 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 whatever it is in your life. He's bigger than that. He's bigger than your debt. He's bigger than your headache. He's better, bigger than what the medical folks that say to your diagnosis or prognosis. He's bigger than the bullying that's coming to the schoolyard. He's bigger than the cyber attacks. He's bigger than unemployment. He's bigger than homelessness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. today forgetting not your benefits and we, we understand that you are who you say you are and that you'll do what you say you will do. Father God, we're looking for a touch today. We're, we're, we're looking for you today, Father God, and we're forgetting not all the things that you have done in the past, bringing us all the way to this place. So Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name. Counting ourselves blessed just to have known you today, Father God. Just to have seen you today, Father God. The birds of the air, the trees, Father God, the flowers, the plants, Father God, to breathe in the air, Father God, our heart beating, Father God, our toes, Father God, our fingers, Father God, our tongue, our ears, our eyes, Father God, all parts in between, but Father God, because of you we are. 
And because we are, Father God, we set our hearts, Father God, full of thanks and a mouth full of praise today, yes, Father God. Sir. A heart full of thanks and a mouth full of praise today yes, to give you glory today, Father God. Yes. That you have set this day, Father God, fully of glory, fully of love, Father God. And you have placed us in it, Father God. So we bear witness to you today, Father God. Seen and unseen, Father God. Confessing all things, Father God. Sinning unseen. So, Father God, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father God. Any pride in our life, Father God, we find it up right now in the name of Jesus. The pride of life, Father God, it's got to go. Because you are more glorious than anything that we could ever think of. Father God, the lust of the eye, Father God, for you, you have given us your all in all, Father God, and we are sustained by, with, and through it. Especially through your word, Father God. So we bind up the lust of the eye, Father God. And the lust of the flesh, we got of a carnal mindset, Father God, we ask that you unclutter our minds today, Father God. It sets our thoughts on the things above, Father God, and not the things below. So, Father God, we bind up the carnal mindset today, Father God. And it focuses on the flesh, Father God. But we focus on the spirit, Father God. But it's the spirit who gives life. The flesh brought this nothing. So, Father God, we're coming to you. The most humble way that we know how, Father God. Full of your glory. Full of your love. Full of your forgiveness, Father God. For you have said, as far as the east is for the west, so are our transgressions. So, Father God, we came in broken, Father God. But we're leaving here healed, Father God. We're yes. speaking that into the atmosphere. Before the word is even proclaimed and spoken, Father God, we believe that you are who you say you are. And that you will do what you say you will do. And that you will do it for us, Father God. Rain down your anointing into this place today. In the name of Jesus, Father God. And loosen the burdens that we came in with, Father God. Loosen right now the shackles, Father God, that have us out there. Father God, strengthen the hands of the weak, Father God. Unbuckle the knees, Father God. And strike in the crooked back, Father God. That we might give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Father God, until that point, Father God, even if it's on bended knee, Father God, even if it's in the pit, Father God, even if it's within the shackles, Father God, you are our God, and there is none like you. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And, Father God, we thank you for your presence in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to transition, we're going to transition to our confession of faith, and then you'll be followed by the praise team. If those uh, online would just follow with me, those in the sanctuary you have in your program. This is my church. My church gives me hope. God planted me here, so I know I will grow. I am blessed and refreshed, pure and mature, faithful and grateful, healthy and wealthy. We are debt free. The lender and not the borrower. The head and not the tail. Above and not below. We walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We pray diligently as we continue our quest. We are mighty soldiers under God's microscope. So with one body that gives people hope. Hallelujah. We are now in the hands of the praise. Hallelujah, 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 glory to the Lamb of God. We thank God just for being God this morning, amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody just glad that he's God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he is a deliverer and he is a rescuer. And I was on my way this morning and I was coming down the hill maybe a little bit faster than the speed limit was supposed to be. And as I was coming down the hill, I saw two cops sitting there on the side. And I began to kind of ease on the brake before I got up to him. And I said, Lord, just cover me. Again, it just reminded me of how many times God has rescued us. Yes. I really expected some blue lights to come behind me because I was rolling down the hill a little fast, Pastor David. But praise the Lord, God gave me his grace and his mercy. And there's so many times where we don't even see that God has gone before us and he has covered us. And he has kept us. And so just because he's a rescuer. Yes, Lord. Just because he's a deliverer. Just because he's a weight maker. Just because he's peace in the midst of the storm. And we just ought to give God some praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We sing because he's been good. Yes, we Lord. praise because he's provided. Amen. Yes, he continues to show up. And so we just give God the glory and the honor this morning. And I just want to encourage you to praise God how you need to praise God. Thank you, Lord. There is release in your praise. Yes, Lord. There is release in your praise. Amen. Amen. God said when Jehoshaphat and the army went out with praise, they didn't even have to fight no more. They just sit down somewhere. Amen. 
So God set up the ambush and they recognized who he was and gave him the glory yes. and the honor that was due his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Put your hands together for the rescuer. Yes, yes God. Hallelujah, he's still doing it. Thank you, Lord. He's so worthy. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. You have a rescue my life. You have a rescue my life. And I'm never going back. You have a rescue my life. You have a rescue my life.
Better than it was five minutes ago. God, we just take a moment to tell you thank you. Because you've been good. That's all right. Go ahead and give him the praise to his name. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. He's lifting you. We have a husband. He's lifting you out of your lonely place. He's lifting you this morning. So it's all right to bless his name. Go on and give him the glory that he's good today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord whispered to me yesterday. We're waiting around as if God over us. We're not moving as if God owes us the next moment or the next breath or the next hour. And there are things that God is calling us to do and we're waiting as if he owes us another moment. For God, we thank you that you've given us this one right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's calling his people. He's calling his people to be light in the midst of God. So Father, we just thank you that you yet woke us up with a call, God. You woke us up with a command, God. You said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Amen. So we thank you, God, this morning. We answer the call, Father. And we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just put our hands together for the Savior? If you really didn't give it, can you just put it together for him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. yes. Through the name of Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Lord. All right, what a what an honor and a blessing to be here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Uh, all of you that showed up to just be here and got past the obstacles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As the Lord began to bless us and move us in a direction that is pleasing in his sight. Yes. Just want to say good morning to the national and the international and the local. And you, those of you that are sitting here, good morning, good morning, good morning. As we begin to embark upon some different things. And I want to give God the praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, just a reminder, the Lord told us at the first part of this year that this is going to be a year of divine increase. And we're now in that 12th month of this year. And I can look around and see how God has truly blessed us this year. It's just been a blessing. So thank you, Lord, for that. Youth Academy, I want just a reminder with Youth Academy, this uh, we're going to start back this month. Youth Academy is going to be at 10 o'clock to 10.50 on the third Sunday. So uh, if you want to, your child to come in and I'm with them and we're just talking about everything at their level that they can understand. They're asking pastor questions and he's answering them through the Bible. And if you want to sit in that with them, parents, it's totally up to you. But I want the youth to start coming back now so that we can get involved into that scene. Uh, Sister Tamara says she wants to do the... the bring the church to the next level with Christ, uh, Christmas decorations. And so she's ready to use her talent. So uh, she wants to get with you. So get with her, raise your hand for me, my sister, raise your hand. She wants to get with you and you want to get with her and then uh, uh, so that you can come in and just beautify the church. In the past, my sister, the only thing we probably did was bring the point setters and set them at the altar. But uh, there's something else God placed on your heart to, to do, go ahead and do it. I'd like to have a Christmas tree in the house, Saints. I know some people don't believe in that, but I, I, I think I want a Christmas tree this year. And I want to say something. I'm not obligating no one. I'm not obligating. If there's a gift that you want to bring to church to set under that tree, it's totally up to you. But if there's someone in the house that God has placed in your heart to bless them, you can put that gift under the tree. Now, saying that, I did not obligate nobody. I said, <laughs> if God put it in your heart, to come and bless somebody in the church, you can bring it, put it under that tree. No obligations, no obligations, just you trying to uh, do what God has placed in your heart to do at this time. It's a blessed season. A youth pastor went yesterday and she delivered an awesome word. It was a women, it was a women uh, service, a women power, a women conference, and she went and just let the Lord use her. And I was, I was so proud, youth pastor, to hear how the Lord used you. And, and moved you. You took self out of the way and you just let him do what he had to do and you rendered an awesome word. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, without further ado, uh, I'm ready now to do uh, what needs to be done. You know, uh, the Bible tells us in Mark, the ninth chapter, he says, some things cannot be changed unless we pray and we fast. Some things cannot be moved unless we pray and we fast. And so the Lord sent me on a prayer that I'll finish at 12 o'clock today. So I'm after a demon today, saints, and I'm prayed up for that demon, and I've been fasting for that demon, and so I'm coming today to reveal and expose that demon to you. So I want you to turn to your Bibles to the book of Galatians and go to the third chapter of the book of Galatians as we begin to move in such, in such a way uh, that I want you to realize that where I'm taking you today, some of us have been so exposed to it, but today we're going to break it. In the name of Jesus. We're in the book of Galatians to go to the second, uh, the third chapter of the book of Galatians. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go to the second chapter of the book of Galatians in the name of Jesus. Brandon, good to see you back in the house. You and family. Glad to see you back in in the name of Jesus. Sister Graham, uh, good to see you back as well. And we're praying that everything is going to uh, be better with Brother uh, Purdy and Brother Roy as we begin to move and bless them. We Keep on praying, because I know we serve a God that's, that's more than enough. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, he'll, he'll heal you. So we sent Jehovah Rapha in that direction so that he's a God of healing. And we know that he'll go and he'll do what needs to be done in that name of Jesus. And so uh, we're in the book of Galatians and go to the second chapter of the book of Galatians. I in the name of Jesus. Not yet, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I want to set a case for you this morning before I get started uh, running my mouth. And I want, 
And I want you to hear this first before uh, before I do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are, for what you're about to do in this house, God. This is your house. Move like you need to move, God. Yeah. Strengthen like you need to strengthen. Help like you need to help and deliver like you need to deliver. In the name of Jesus, Father, we're open to hearing from you this morning. So, Father, let every heart, every mind, every soul, God, be subject to you this morning. Yes. Let it be done now, Father. So I declare and I decree right now in the name of Jesus. Jehovah Gaborah, I'm calling you now to help us this morning. As we begin to go into a direction, Father, that we're going to need support. So in the name of Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, provide us, help us, show us how you're going to begin yes. to supply for us this morning. In the name of Jesus, supply every need. Do this now, Father. We'll be so careful to give you the praise. The glory and the honor shall be yours. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want to I want to set some foundation first, and then I'll move from there. The Bible tells us in the book of John. Don't go there. Let me read it to you. Uh, John, uh, fifth, the fifth chapter of John, and the 24th verse, he says, Most surely I say to you, he who hears my word and believe in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. So Jesus has set the stage that says, if you believe in me, Jesus, you believe in the God that sent me. And so I want you to understand that in order to get to God, we have to go through Jesus. So he said, if you believe in that, then truly you're going to believe in me. So he sent me to Jeremiah. He says, Jeremiah, the third chapter and verses 15. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Then it shall come to pass that when you are multiplied and increased in the land, those days said the Lord, that they will say no more, they are going to come of the Lord. I want you to understand that if you hear what Jesus said about God, and I just showed you where he says, I have pastors of my own heart to give you knowledge and to give you understanding, then that's what I've been sent here for this morning, to give you knowledge and to give you understanding. So that you would understand that what you're going through uh, is going to get through and you're not going to continue to beat your head in this particular subject. But before we get there, you know, uh, play that for me, please. I want you to hear this song as we begin to hear just some of it because this is where I'm headed this morning. I just want to get you back into that worship mindset. I want your heart to be uh, circumcised and I want your heart to hear where I'm about to go. And I believe the song is going to get us there. Turn that up just a little bit, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. That should be your plea this morning. Lord, I can't do nothing without you. That's how we flow this morning. Yes. God, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. You can pay me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wanted you to hear some of that because we need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and, and to protect us and help us through all the endeavors that we're going through. But today, if I had to give you a title, it was going to be, and it still is, Reverse 
the curse. That's all right. That's all right. I want to talk to you about that curse. Reverse the curse. And so many of us has been inundated and has been been duped by that particular curse. But I feel like my hands are wrapped and I feel like I got my gloves on and I feel like a heavyweight contender because we're in the ring now. We're fighting. And we're fighting for our lives. We're fighting for our children's lives. We, we, we're fighting for peace and tranquility. We were fighting. And I feel like I'm in a ring this morning with a heavyweight contender. And I am. But I want you to understand there's two things that I want you to understand and get out of this particular setting today. There's a generational curse and there's a generational cycle. There is a generational curse and there's a generational cycle. The Bible tells us that Jesus died on the cross for that. Now, a generational cycle is a specific pattern or speech that is constantly spoken or did, and it is deposited into the family whereby that family member becomes consistent and exposed to that particular thing that's happening in the family. That's a particular cycle that we're going through. But Galatians 3 and verse 13 tells us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, curses anyone who hangs on a tree that he that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Because Christ died on the cross for us, we as Christians have been redeemed from the generational curse. So when you say I'm under a generational curse, that's not true unless you're proclaiming that you're no longer a Christian. But because you are Christ-like and because you have choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not no longer under the generational curse, but you are under the generational cycle. The more we are exposed to this particular cycle, the more we are prone to repeat it. Some of the main areas of generational cycle is divorce. Uh, we Mama got a divorce, and her mother got a divorce, and now your marriage is on the rock. So we have alcoholism. You know, some of them have, they, they got you so jacked up with it that when you are so inundated with this particular demon that you pour out some on the ground for the brothers is not here because you're constantly trying to update and keep that particular saying going. Then we look at adultery, and some of us, because daddy did it and because uh, mama was doing it, you, you, you pull that mess into your children. And they think it's okay to do that because they take the sanctity out of marriage. And so that's why God begins to come against us to uh, adultery. And then there's a thing called anger. The more you get angry, the more this demon has been set inside of you to pull you out of a situation. You say, Pastor, I got this thing in me that I just get angry all the time. And I stay angry all the time. What you're doing is you're speaking over your life anger. And so when anger begins to come, you have already allowed it to do what it needs to be done. Some of it is teen pregnancy. Some of it is pornography. Some of it is depression. There's so many things that I can put out here that we are speaking over ourselves. But Christians can no longer be under a generational curse, but we are under a generational cycle. Some of the things James said out of, out of our mouth, we speak blessings and curses. And so we're speaking a curse over our life. Some of them say, Pastor, what are you talking about? When you say, uh, Pastor, I, I killed one thing and it seemed like 10 others is coming, you are allowing yourself to move in a generational curse that says, a generational cycle that says, when I get rid of one thing, I am fueling the failure of 10 others. Oh, you got to get that in a second. Pastor, when I kill one thing, and here come ten others coming at me. You were saying, Pastor, what I just said was, when God has blessed me to get through one thing, I have cursed the other ten things that's coming against me, so now i got to fight. No wonder everything you're going through is a struggle. Everything you're going through is a fight. Everything you're going through, you feel like you're losing because you have cursed your next ten events that you're trying to get through, that you're trying to come against, that you're trying to allow yourself to be successful in. Because out of your mouth, speak blessings and curses. So God sent me here today to tell you, come out of this cycle. I'm coming against this demon that has caused you to speak against yourself for so long. Because the Bible says that as you begin to move, God will bless you. As you begin to strengthen yourself, God will help you. As you begin to acknowledge the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, some of these things he said, I'll pull you out of. For every scripture is an inspiration of Jesus. And that's why the Bible is telling us as we speak what has been spoken, we begin to build a fire underneath us. Poor cat, black cat. Some of you got so much superstition in you that if a black cat go across your path, 
First thing you want to do is make an X. You want to turn around three times, and you want to go in another direction. That's the superstition. That's what's been spoken into your life. But because of that, just because that cat grew up black, was born black, he's already a curse, but the devil is a liar. We're we going to have to rechange that thing. We're going to have to move that thing. And that's why Jesus is telling us that we have to renew our minds daily because this superstition that we're so adequately allowing to come inside of us is preventing us from doing the right thing. God has sent you down the way, but because that demon sent that black cat along your path, you turn and you go another direction. We got so many superstitions that we deal with. Some of them, if you if you're sweeping the floor and you sweep your feet, some of them say you're going to jail, and all of us say you're gonna be poor the rest of your life. So many superstitions that have been handed down to us. But Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What they're saying is not of me. It's contrary to what I just said to you. It's time for us to reverse that generational cycle, the way that it's coming to us. Speak pleasure over your life. Speak healing over your life. Speak strength over your life. Speak it. Jeremiah 17 and 5 tells us that curses a man who trusts in a man and makes flesh his strength. But the more we come against ourselves, the more we speak against our situation, the more we speak against our body, the more we speak against our mind, we are causing we are causing ourselves to come under condemnation. And when you're coming under condemnation, you're putting coal in a fire that has been built over you, that has been built for you. And the Bible tells us that in Jeremiah, he says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who, who, who hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water, which spreads out his roots by the river. We were in Jeremiah 17 and 7, and will not fear when the heat comes. In other words, the heat is going to come. The, the, the coals have been set in the fire. This is what we have spoken over our lives. But because we serve God, God says, if you trust in me and stop trusting in a man, blessed shall you be. Yeah. you got to understand that God will. We, we get caught up in the loss of it all, caught up in the heart, and caught up in the mood of it all. Stop speaking a curse over your children. Watch this part as I begin to look at it and say, oh, Lord, I didn't realize this. But as we begin to, to look at our children and we begin to speak to our children, uh, <coughs> Exodus 26. Exodus 20 and verse 5 tells us that God says, I'm a jealous God. Visit the iniquities of the father on the children to the third and fourth generation to those that hate me. What am I saying? As we begin to buddy up with this condemnation, as we begin to speak condemnation over our lives, we are causing our children's children's children to be exposed to what you said. So that's why you're going through some of the things you're saying now, because you have been exposed to what dad said, or was exposed to what mama said, and you're in that generational lineage. But we got to understand, it's time now that we break that cycle. Amen. Today, we're going to break that cycle. Today, you're going to speak life over yourself. Romans 8 says, there is now, therefore, no condemnation yeah. from yeah. those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So we are walking according to the spirit of God this morning. And I want you to realize that God is going to bless you. He is going to work it out. But we got to watch our speech. The Bible says we got to tame that tongue and make that tongue realize you can't keep speaking this condemnation over me. But I will be blessed by God. And so I told you to turn to Galatians, the second chapter, and verse 18. Verse 18 says, so, so for if I build again those things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. So when you came and you asked God to save you, he cleansed you of all of that mess. He cleansed you of all that unrighteousness. He cleansed you of all of that, and he made you a new creature. Behold, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything are new. But when you begin to feel like you can't make it, you begin to, to speak that you're going to be a failure. Speak that you're not going to get it. Speak that it's not going to happen to you. You are operating in a generational cycle. And it's time to cut it loose this morning and realize that that cycle is just there to hinder you so that you won't make it. A generation cycle comes. It comes to take your vision. 
It comes to take your vision. Some of us are saying, you know what, Pastor? I can't see like I used to see. I, I can't even find my glasses sometimes because I can't see them. And, and, and your vision begins to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because you keep speaking it. I can't see. You keep speaking. I'm getting blind. You keep speaking. My sight is going away. But why don't you speak? I have vision now. I can see. God will restore my vision. I will. We got to begin to speak positive things over things that's negative. Pastor, I can't. We're up two down together to make a nickel because you are speaking poverty over yourself. But Jesus said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health. What is it that sounds so good in your family that you are consistently saying that it's just not that of God? And it's causing you to be in a generational cycle that's causing you to go down. Some of us, it's just the speech. We must stop fueling the cycle. We got to understand that Jesus will change your speech. Uh, speak, he will change blessings, he will change things on you so that you would realize that the God I serve, he does care about me. This cycle has control your thoughts long enough uh, just because grandmama said it doesn't mean it made it right. Because granddaddy said it doesn't mean it makes it right. We have to begin to go into that Bible, study that Bible to show ourselves approved unto God a workman need not be ashamed but rightly to buy the word. So as we begin to rightly to buy the word of God, we'll understand that God will bless us. God will work it out. God will strengthen us. He says, for, look at verse 8, uh, 19. For though the law uh, died, for though the law died to the law that I might live to God. The law of this generational curse. The law of this thing that's coming. But though the law died to the law that I might live to God, we have to be believed and we have to understand that the God that we serve, he will prevent these things from happening to us. He will make us a new, crea a new creation. He will bring us out of this situation. I will have finances. My life will be blessed. When you wake up in the morning, start speaking a new generational cycle. And that is... Begin to bless you. Get your children to start speaking a new generational cycle. That is speaking blessings over their life. Have your children to recite a, 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 a confession every morning. I am of God. God will bless me. God will help me. When I'm in need, he will supply. When I'm hurting, he will strengthen. God will give me sweet sleep. Begin to start speaking different things over your life because we spoke enough of condemnation over our lives. And so a lot of things that's happened to us is because we spoke that over our lives. But he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Yes. It is no longer I who lives, but the Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and has given himself for me. So you're not alone, saints. God does love you. But we got to clean up that speech. We got to clean it up now and realize, oh, I can't keep saying it. Yeah, it sounds good because that's what the family has said. That's what has been, you have been exposed to. Even from a child, you've been exposed to that now that you're an adult. It's easy for you to say it. It just rolls off of your tongue because that's something that you've been hearing all your life. But today, we got to re we got to refuse that thing. We got to cut it off. We got to make it realize that I can't keep saying that because every time I say that, it's causing me to become lesser and lesser likely to be successful in the very things that I'm trying to do. He says, I will curse you to the iniquities of your children to the third and the fourth generation. Isn't it time now that we realize that what you say to your child really affects them? You tell him you're just like your daddy and your daddy wasn't no good. Well, you just told that child he's never going to amount to anything. And so we got to stop beating our children up, and we got to start raising our children as if they are an inheritance to us. Because if they are inheritance to us, and we build that inheritance in the sight of God, that's why God tells us to train that child in the way that he go, and when they get older, they won't depart from it. God wants us to teach that child his ways, and not the ways of that generational cycle that you've been inundated with, that you've been locked down with, that's causing you so much harm, so much danger. you got to stop it because that generational cycle is there to prevent you from being successful. There to prevent you from having the will of God become successful in your life. That's what it does. So he says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness come through the law, then Christ died in vain. Good God. 
So if we continue to say, you know, I'm never going to amount to nothing. I'm never going to have anything. God is not going to bless me. And you're constantly speaking condemnation over your body. You're constantly speaking that God is not going to bless you. You're constantly speaking that I'm not going to get promoted. You're constantly speaking that uh, somebody else is better than me. Somebody else is doing greater than me. You're constantly speaking all of this over your life. Then the very thing that you're speaking over your life is going to manifest. It's going to manifest. So I'm asking you a question this morning. All of you just listen to me, whether by Wi-Fi or whether sitting here. Just this morning, this morning, what curse have you spoke over your life? What curse have you spoke over your life? I don't feel like it today. It's just, I'm just, I'm just this. I'm, I'm just mad at the world. But Christ says, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So when you start speaking, uh, 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 what did God say about this day? Yeah. What did God say about you coming through this day? He said, I will bless you. And then he said, let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. So when the mind is of Christ Jesus is inside of you, we won't speak against Christ Jesus because his mind is stayed on him. Amen. We won't begin to speak over our children mess. We won't begin to tell her she just like the, her no good mama because her mama wasn't no good. And you acting just like her. So now you're just telling that little girl that she's not going to be any good. But the devil is a liar. We got to cut it off. Because, see, the Bible tells us that be angry and sin not. Because sometimes your children uh, get you so angry at things. You begin to talk back to them the things that your mother or your father used to say back to you and it wasn't right then it's sure not right now but you're angry and that thing is inside of you and you're mad you're never going to be that get somewhere and sit down you're just so disobedient da, da, da. you are speaking negative over that child because you're angry but the bible says be angry and sin not so that means when you're angry at that child for what they are repeatedly doing don't fire off at them then you step back you go somewhere and sit down somewhere and say, Lord, this child has me angry. But what can I do right now to talk to this child? Because you got to remember that child is an inheritance from God. So God made you the parent over that particular child who has a purpose in this life. And that purpose is to please God. But when we're speaking condemnation and damnation over that particular child, we're coming against the very child that God has placed in your hands to raise for his purpose. Amen. So now, here you are, that child raises up, and that child is stealing, and that child is into this, and that child is into that. And you say, Pastor, pray for that, pray for that, pray for that. But you've been speaking condemnation over that child for the last 10 years. For the last five years. And what you have spoken is now manifest and is now mature. But now you want somebody to help pull you out of a situation. The devil is a liar. Today we're going to stop that generational cycle. And I come today to pull that demon out of here. I want that demon to move away from you. I want you to realize that that thing is coming to hurt you. That thing is coming to stop you. That thing has come to prevent you from receiving everything that God has in store for you. Because it will keep you angry. It will keep you frustrated. I'm just sick and tired of everything. Just leave me alone. It's got you so frustrated that you begin to speak contrary to what the Bible has said. That's what it does. Satan has a, a demon called a deceit. And he comes to deceive you. And then that comes deception. It comes fear. And fear will come in. And now you don't have a leg to stand on because you have opened the door to that demon. The Bible says that if I were to call you a witch this morning, you'd get angry. But Jesus said in the Bible, rebellion is as witchcraft. That's the word. And so if rebellion is as witchcraft, and I say, stop using witchcraft. You say, Pastor, I don't do that. Don't call no pastor. But if you are resisting and if you are being rebellious against the word of God, against the mind of God, against the heart of God, then you are operating not only on rebellion, but you're operating as a witch. Oh, it's in the word. It's in the word. So we have to understand that we love the Lord. He heard our cry. He's going to bless us. He's going to do what he said. But he says, out of your mouth shall speak a blessing 
Oh, hear my soul, says James. Then he says, the affection, fervent, the affection, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So now, if you are in right status with Jesus, you are doing the best you know how to do. And when you wake up in the morning, you begin to speak a blessing over your life. Today, I'm going to stop this addiction. Today, I'm going to move away from this addiction. You see, that addiction, you can't get rid of. That addiction, you can't quit because it's been spoken over your life. My God. And you buddy not with it. Oh, Lord, I got this, but I just can't quit it. You just said you can't quit that addiction. But Jesus said, if you come to me, all is burden and heavy laden. And take my yoke and learn from me. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And whatever you're going through, he said, I'll pull you out of it. But you're saying, I can't quit this addiction. My mama did it and my daddy did it, so it must be, it must be for me too. The devil is a liar. Today, it has to stop. Today, it has to stop. You know, when I go to the doctor and they look at it and say, hey, if your mama had diabetes, if her mama had diabetes, chances are you're going to get diabetes. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to get it because I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health. And so I got to stand on what Jesus said and not what the man said because Jeremiah uh, 17 and verse 5 says, Cursed is he that trusts in man. But that's what the doctor said. He's not God. That's right. That's right. He's not God. What did God say? God says, if I believe in him and trust in him, that he'll heal me. Yeah. He'll bring me out of this situation. Yeah. And so now the doctor tells you that, oh, Lord, you're going to die this day. And you're going to die that day. And things are going to happen to you. And so you're so caught up in what the doctor say, you can't even pray. Your mouth is trembling with nothing coming out. And you're just as nervous and you're just as heartbroken because that's what the doctor said. But what did Jesus say about your situation? Because Hezekiah... The, the Bible says that he sent prophet to Hezekiah. He so Jesus said that he's gonna he's gonna die. But Hezekiah didn't worry about what man said. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall, which means that he's not worried about what nobody else said but Jesus. And the Bible says Hezekiah began to pray and he began to call out to the name of Jesus. And then the Bible said he sent that young man back to tell Hezekiah, I'm gonna add 15 more years to your life. Because you didn't trust in man, you trusted me. You didn't move out to man and tell everybody, put your business on Facebook, Snapchat, and, and TikTok, whoever wanted to go in and look at what's going on with you. And then you got yourself so jacked up and people coming back at you because Satan will use anybody and say, girl, you ought to do this before you die. Man, you ought to do this before you die. But Jesus said you're not going to die. He said, I died and I came against death. Oh, death. Where's your sting? This demon will have you to the point where you wish your death on yourself so that you can pull yourself out of this situation you got yourself into. But Jesus sent me here today to tell you you can reverse that curse on your life. You can come out of that addiction. You can come out of whatever it is that has you bound. You can come out of that today. You can stop it. He said, I want you to fast, son, because some demons cannot be broken. Some demons cannot be cast out unless you fast. So he put me on a fast this morning. He put me on a fast a couple of days. He said, and now I want you to go and speak under a new anointing this morning. So that anointing that I'm speaking to you right now, Saints, is this thing is inundated into you. This thing has been dropped into you a long time. This thing has been dropped into you a long time. This thing has been dropped into you a long time to the point that it's okay if you repeat it. It's okay if you repeat it because this is this is budding up with the family. It's budding up with, with your heart. You've gotten this thing into your heart now. It's okay to say that. It's okay to say if you're sweeping the floor and you come across your feet with the broom that you're going to end up in jail or you're going to end up with poverty. So you got to do it. It's okay because that's what you've been hearing. If I know, if I was give this mic out to you and tell you, give me some of the superstition that you've heard come through your life, that heard through your family, you would be inundated with so much mess that when we leave here, we'll be saying, why? But by coming today to ask you, and I come today to let you understand that the God that you serve sent me here this morning and said, hey, you can reverse that thing. You can reverse that thing that you shall live. You shall live. You shall live and not die. And the cloud works of the Lord. Though the Lord has chased you severely, he has not given you over to death. So if I woke you up this morning, closed you in your right mind, gave you the ability to get around, gave you the ability to move, gave you the ability to have your faculties with you, gave you that ability, then what makes you think that I don't have the power to reverse that curse that you so got yourself into? God says, I will bless you. Yes. You go for that job, you say, I am going to get it. If I don't get it, God, you send me where I know I'll get blessed. Yes, Lord. Yes, 
That's how you begin to speak that thing. I am, brother. I'm not going to have another failure in my life. And when I go to put this loan in for this bank, and Lord, I know that you're going to bless me with this loan, but first, I'm going to pray first, God. See if this is your will that I should put this loan in. And when I put the loan in, I know that you have my back. Because you said if I do as you have instructed me to do, you are now obligated to give me the best out of that situation. Say that again, Pastor. If I do what you have instructed me to do, Jesus, you are now obligated to give me the best out of what is yet to come out of the situation that I'm about to embark upon. That's why the Bible says pray about everything. Pray without ceasing. Because if I pray about everything and, I, and, I, and, the, and if I just give God to pray, he is going to send you down a path that says, hey, you're going to go before me. You're going to make the crooked path straight. And when you begin to make the crooked path straight, everything that I have to give you, everything that I have to bless you, he says, I take pleasure in giving it to you because you deserve this. You worked hard for it. You stood in the fire and you gave your all. You didn't quit. You didn't give up. You didn't cave in. You kept on going. Jesus had to go through the fire. Jesus had to go through getting beat. Jesus had to go through some trials and tribulations. It wasn't, a, it wasn't peachy king for Jesus either, but he made it through. Yeah. Just so you and I could see, I made it through. Yeah. He's going to help me. Yeah. He's going to get me through the situation. I don't care what your situation is now. You serve a God that can pull you out. I don't care what your situation is now. You serve a God that can pull you out. I don't care what your addiction is right now, but you serve a God that will heal you. He will bring you out of that situation. That demon is trying to keep you there because it knows that if you stay in there long enough, you're going to get so jacked up in it, you don't know how you're going to be affected by it. I got so many family members now that just so, so involved in alcoholism that they keep saying, it's a generational curse, it's a generational curse, and I'm drinking this and I'm drinking that. And as a young age, at age seven, I was introduced to a beer. Tasted it. Worst thing I ever tasted in my life, but it was in me. It was in me. And because it was in me, now it has the opportunity to become greater in me, stronger in me. And so as I begin to grow up and through this world, they begin to tell me how alcoholism is in the family. So I brought into it that there must be a generational curse because I got so many uncles and aunts drinking alcohol, so it must be something that is going to be inside of me. And since I got so inundated with this generational curse, the Crown Royal became my best friend. Had to carry that thing in my pocket in order to get the confidence that I need in order to operate in any situation. Here I am in somebody's army, a non-commissioned officer, got this Crown Royal bottle in his pocket. So that he can go out and move the troops like it needs to be moved. Why? Because I needed that confidence. Why? Because that's, they tell me that if you got that in you, you can do anything. It gives you the strength that you need. That's what that crown warrior did. But it was killing me. It was killing me. And what I'm saying to you now is killing you to be able to speak negativity over your life and begin to allow the family traditions to become yours. Cut it today so that God can bless you. I never knew that I was going to be somebody's pastor when I was carrying around that crown royal Bible because God had favor in me. Woo! And God says, I'm going to bless that boy because I got some things for him to do. Well, he said the same for you. That young lady, or that young man, I have some things I need for you to do. I have a purpose and a plan for you. But we got to understand this. We got to, we got to die to ourselves and live for Jesus. Amen. We got to die to ourselves and say, okay, God, Whatever it is that you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. Self, you got to take a back seat. Matter of fact, self, get out of my way because I am living for Jesus now. And whatever he wants me to do. And see, the thing that I love about Jesus also, I said last week that he was coming for you. But another thing I love about Jesus is when you begin to do something that's out of his will, he'll let you know. Yes, he will. He'll let you know. He, he's not going to let you go out there all, all in the blind. He'll let you know, no, that's not my will. And, you, and you'll feel some kind of way. Anything will be shocking to you. You'll be like, whoa. Can't be of God. But sometimes that mindset will push you into doing it anyway because of the pleasure behind it. But you read what you sow. Okay. But we read what we sow. So if we go against God and we do the things that we do for pleasure, then you can't be angry at God because you fell in the hole. When he was trying to tell you, don't go that way because there is a hole. But I do want to go that way, God, because there's some things over there I want to do on my own. And you 
fall in a hole. And now you got to say, Lord, pull me out of this hole. Pull me out of this situation. And, and, and sometimes God will leave you there for a season so that you can realize that, hey, I fell in this hole on my own, but it's going to take Jesus to pull me out of this situation. Yeah, and you'll stay right there. And you'll stay right there. Lord, when are you going to help me? Lord, bow down your ear to me, God. Create to me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I won't do it no more. David, when he realized what he did with Bathsheba, he began to cry out to the Lord. He fell in a hole. But if he would have listened, he would have never went into that hole. But because he was in that hole, God used that to bless him. Because what Satan meant for evil, God turned it around for his good. Yeah. What am I saying to you this morning, saints? What Satan has meant for evil for you, God is going to turn that thing around for you. He's going to begin to bless you because he realized you didn't realize you was operating under a reverse cycle of the regenerational curse. A reverse cycle. That's a curse cycle. You're not there no more. So God is going to bless you. And you realize, hey, so that's what's been happening to me. That's why everything I go to do is a fight. That's why, because I keep I keep fueling that fire with my mouth. Now I got to change my pattern of speech. I can't say that no more. There was a young man in my life, and every time I would go to him and say, "Hey, can I can I borrow this? Or can I borrow?" Nah, man, I'm paralyzed, bro. I ain't got nothing today, man. I'm paralyzed, bro. And if I talk to him today, he say, "Son, I ain't got no money," because he's been speaking over his life. He's paralyzed, bro. What he is. Because that's what he said. So, who are you today? And what are you saying over your life? My God. My Lord. <laughs> who are you today? And what are you proclaiming? What are you speaking? What are you commanding over your life? Satan will come to take your vision. If he can take your vision, you can't read the word of God. He's coming to take your mind. That's why Jesus said, renew your minds. Our minds get so jacked up, you know, that you can have your glasses on top of your head. And you're like, man, you see my glasses. I don't see my glasses. Where my glasses at? And you're looking all over the place, and your mind's so jacked up, but they're on your head. Help us, Father. Help us, Jesus. So, so, so we got to say, you got to stop saying, I must be losing my mind. Devil is a liar. You say, my mind is strong. My mind is out. I'll be able to find everything. I'm going to remember everything to God. Take me out of this world. That's where my mind is. Don't keep saying, I must be losing my mind. Everything coming up again, man. I just can't remember nothing no more. But see, you just said over your life, you can't remember nothing. So when somebody asks you a question, you got to look all up in the ceiling, on the floor, trying to wait for that thing to come back till you finally come to you. You know, girl, that's what I was trying to say. That's what I'm talking about right there. You were trying to find that thing. But you spoke that over your life. And because you've spoken that over your life, it's manifesting in your life. And so it's doing what you said. Mm, we have to stop speaking condemnation over life. That's why Romans 8 chapter says, therefore there's no condemnation in those that are in Christ Jesus. But we serve a God. He's just so non-combative towards us. That whatever you chose to do, he'll wait on you to come back. Whatever you choose to go out and do, you sit back and wait on my child. Please come back to me so I can bless you. But you out here sowing your old sowing your seed. I got to do this while I'm able to do this. I got to make sure I got to do this while I'm able to do it. And you're going down all the wrong avenues because you feel young and vibrant and you can do it. And he said, that's not the way. The Holy Spirit is shaking. At night, he wake you up in the middle of the night. Three o'clock in the morning, you're waking up. He's trying to give you something to do. He's trying to tell you to pray to me. Come on, read the Bible. Come on, pray to me. Come on, read about it. Oh, he just walk. Every time I turn around, I'm waking up at the same time of the night. I don't even know why I'm waking up at the same time. Over and over and over again. It's because Jesus is talking to you. He's trying to get you to read. He's trying to get you to pray. You're not just waking up on your own. He wakes you up. And when he wakes you up, he wants you to do something. Because the more he tries to talk to you in your daily activity, the more you so you so busy, you can't hear him talk to you. So he'll wake you up out of your sleep so that he can tell you some things, so that he can you can read some things, open the Bible and begin to read it. And then when you finish reading, you finish praying. You lay down and you wake up and your alarm clock go off, he lay, wake you up, and it's like you've never missed a beat. But he wakes you up periodically so that he can talk to you. Why is he doing this? 
Because he has a way for you. He has a trail for you to go down. He has a place that you're going to stand in. He has a destination that you're going to make it to. But he needs the fullness of you to get where he's taking you so that you'll be ready to operate in the fullness of him when you get there. Amen. Good God. God will bless you. But he says we got to reverse the curse. Reverse curse. Today, saints, come after that demon. We're going to reverse that curse this morning. We're going to realize that out of my mouth shall speak continuous blessings. Amen. Whatever's hurting, let it hurt. I'm just going to speak a blessing over here, too. Whatever's coming against me, I'll let it come. I'm going to speak over that, too. I'm going to lay hands on my leg, lay hands on my foot, lay hands on whatever I need to lay hands on on my own and speak a blessing over this thing. Because I've spoken a curse long enough. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I gotta lay hands on my own head, lay hands on my own body. In the name of Jesus. And begin to speak it. Begin to speak it. And the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. Do you think you're healed? Do you think you're blessed? Do you think God will come at your aid? No, you think because he blessed pastor, he won't bless me. Well, he blessed this person, he won't bless me. And one other thing, saints, and I know I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. We say, Lord, bless my finances. There's some things that I need to do, God. Now, I'm not the preacher that preaches about money. That's just not my anointing. But when he lays something on my heart to tell you, then I have to tell you because I have to be obedient. But sometimes God will put in your spirit to sow a seed. Or well, sometimes they tell you to bring your tithes to the house. But so many Christians, they have a problem with bringing their tithes to the house. But, but, but they want God to bless their finances. But the Bible says in Malachi 3, will a man rob God? How will you rob me? By not bringing your tithes and your offering to his house. Then the only place in the Bible where he says, test me at this. That if you don't bring your tithes, then you all these lists of curses that you're going to undergo. But if you do bring your tithe, this is what I'm going to bless you. And the thing that when I sit around the round table with other pastors, and we're talking about situations about tithe paying, tithe paying. Well, they need to bring me my tithes because I need to get this and I need to get that. But you don't, you don't understand. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I draw men. Yeah. And then when I tell them, I'm the kind of pastor I preach because of the love of God. My church doesn't pay me a salary. I preach because I love God. And boy, do I get a talking to me. Uh, they tell the wages. Uh, I care less about that, but until God tells me, then we're going a different direction. Until then, I got to do what he's telling me to do. Yeah. So I get shunned. I get beat up. But I keep coming up here every Sunday and saying, Lord, let your will be done. Father, bless your people. Keep them covered under your blood. Work it out for you. In the name of Jesus. And I do believe if I just stay faithful long enough, God will create. Good God Almighty. He will create a banking account that I don't have to worry about anything. But I got this keep coming up here, giving you the praise, giving you what God told me. Because you heard me read to you that that pastor, a, sh a shepherd out of my own heart, that's to give you understanding and to give you knowledge. That's my purpose. To get up here and do that. I care less about what some man think about what the church is doing for me. I care less about that. In fact, it makes me laugh because they preach for the money. <laughs> they preach for the money. That's going to run out. Then what? I'm preaching for Jesus. It's never going to run out. It's never going to go away. It's never going to fall short. He's always going to be there for me. I've been into some financial pickles before, saying, I made some real financial pickles where I didn't have a clue where the money was coming from. And I just said, Lord, this is a bill that you have. This is your bill. Because if I'm his son, and if these bills is mine, then they now become his obligation. Because yeah. I pray, I'm paying my tithes, I'm doing the right thing. And he says, I'll open up the windows of heaven, and I pour you a blessing, you'll have, Jesus, you'll have a bill that needs to be paid. And saints, he has not let me down yet. 
He has not let me down. And, and, and I go to the mailbox, and first lady, she go to the mailbox, and tell the Lord, thank you. And I say, thank you, Lord, because he don't send a check through there that take care of everything that I was crying about. But because I stayed in his purpose, because I stayed in his faith, because I stayed in his will, he began to bless us like never before, because sometimes Satan will call things to fall short so you can fall out of the need of your inheritance. Because as long as you fuss in it, God, he can't bless you. Lord, when you gonna help me? When you gonna pay this? When you gonna work it out? I've been doing this and I've been doing that. When, 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 when? What if I take anything you got? Because I can. Because I'm God. Okay. Lord, thank you for blessing me. I don't have it right now, God. But I know you're gonna bless me. Yeah. I know you're gonna work it out for me, God. So thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. And everything that I go to do, I'm successful at it. So when you wake up in the morning, God, everything I go to do today, I'm successful at it. And if I'm not successful at it, God, help me to get around this thing so it won't hinder me any longer. Thank you, God, that my healing is I'm in the best shape now than ever before. Thank you now, God, for what you're about to do for me this day. Give me favor on the job, God. Put people in my life that I can tell even more about you and the things that they've done for me. Stop praying, God, do this for me, God, do that. But, Lord, what can I do for you? You've done enough for me. What can I do for you? And he say, boy, look at my daughter. Look at my son. And therefore, you know, you got so much excess that you can shake the hands of a person. He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So you shake that person and give them a $200 blessing. And you just say, Lord, thank you for letting me do that. He would do that. He would do that. He will continue to do that. Because we are his avenue of resources. Are you a distribution center of Jesus Christ? Oh, y'all got fun with it. <laughs> Are you a distribution center for Jesus Christ? Can he use you, his distribution center, to get his supplies out to his people? Are you a distribution center that he can use you to get his supplies out to his people. What is it that he's going to supply? Could it be faith? Could it be prayer? Could it be a word of encouragement? Yes, Lord. Yes, Could it be you saying what you've been through? Could it be your testimony? What is it that God can use you for that you say, okay, God, I'm your distribution center. What do you want me to distribute today? And do it with purpose. Do it with a smile. Because God says, what you, what you allow me to do for you, yeah. I'm going to do great yeah. for you. Yeah. And then you'll be saying, okay, God, thank you for the blessing. And he'll do it. Yeah. But you got to change your pattern of speech. Today, do it. When you catch yourself doing something or saying something that's contrary to what God has said to you, rebuke it. Rebuke it. Second Corinthians 10 5 says, casting out every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the will of God. Rebuke it, cast it down, and begin to flow. Are y'all with me this morning, Say, Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, now is the time to do it. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So that's all you have to do, confess. You don't have to repeat after me. You have to say it. You have to believe it. That God raised Jesus from the dead. He said you shall be saved. And when you are saved, God says, all, all of this that I just told you about today, he says, I am now your Lord and Savior. I will help you. I will yeah. bless you. I will yeah. work it out for you. Thank and so he will. So if you want to be saved, saints, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. No push-ups. No running around the building. None of that. Just say, Lord, I confess it through my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved by you. And that's how easy it is that he'll do it for you. In the name of Jesus. I want to do an altar call. You can sit or stand. It's up to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, for blessing us. God. Woo. Yes, mm. Father, I come against that generational curse, that generational cycle right now in the name of Jesus. That your people now are going to be smarter about what they're saying out of their mouths. What they're saying against another. What they're saying against themselves, their own bodies. They're now going to be conscious more of it, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you now, God, for a blessing that you stored upon us. Yes. How are you going to continue to bless us? How are you going to continue to keep us? Thank you now, Father. For you are an awesome God. You are an almighty God. Yes. So we come against that curse this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you that we're no longer under that generational curse. But that generational cycle is going to have to die too. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. And this is all of the blessings we ask, Father, right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the most sacred things that you can do in the house of the Lord is recognize his body and recognize his blood. So communion is one of the most sacred things that you can do in the house of the Lord. So Jesus grabbed his disciples and he said, all sit around the table. The Bible said he broke the bread. He said, this bread represents my body. He says, eat it. As often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. And so they ate it. He says, drink this. This represents my blood. He says, a likewise man to do it. As often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. The Bible says they went into this. In my heart, sing a hymn. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to represent you in this house. In the name of Jesus. that he'll do what he says he'll do and he'll do it for you. So Heavenly Father, we touch and agree with your promises, Father God. And you said if we abide in you and your word abides in us, yes. we shall ask and whatever we ask, it shall be given to us. By this, the Father is glorified. Then we bear much fruit. Yes. Somebody say much. Much. Somebody much. Much. Much fruit and be his disciples. So Father God, we are leaning not on our own understanding but trusting in all your ways father god that as our hearts are written onto you father god we plant these seeds willingly onto you father god not begrudgingly father god for you said that you love and cheerful giver and not bemoaningly father god for we believe that you are our soul sufficiency father god and aside from you we have no good thing because your word tells us that every good and every perfect gift comes from above so father god everything that we have and all that we are comes from you, Father God. Yes, so, Father, we're simply just giving you a portion of what you have already placed upon our heart. And we ask that your hand be gentle and merciful upon us. 
And, and thank you for meeting us at the point of need as you multiply this seed, Father God. Some ten, some a hundred, some a thousand, some a million fold, Father God. Wherever you, you multiply it, Father God, we know that it is good. Yeah. So, Father God, as we plant these seeds, we bind up all mental states, all things that would hinder us from doing your will. Now, Father God, we glory in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, the basket is going around for those who are in a physical sanctuary and have a physical seed to give. For those who do not have a physical seed but would like to still give, or those who are not in a physical sanctuary, we have a couple avenues that you can go and you can give. The easiest is probably push pay. There's a couple ways you can get to push pay. We're all about options here at Embrace Hope. So 77977 in your phone. 77977. And then where do you put the emoji or your message or whatever? Uh, in your phone, put EH give, and it'll send you some confirmation information, and you can put in your donation there. Perhaps the easiest way to get the push pay is to go to EmbraceHopeInternational.org, and on there, go up and read donations, and there you'll be able to go and get the push pay, and go ahead and collect the seed. The last way is, is to put it in the regular mail, your snail mail, uh, and you can get that address from EmbraceHopeInternational.org or from the Facebook site right there. Either way, um, you know, don't let the distance or, or let the time uh, go and, and, and stop you from doing what God has ordained on your heart. Uh, but you can go ahead and you can give that. And again, it's 77977 on your phone. And then in where you normally put the emoji, uh, EH give. Or you can go up to EmbraceHopeInternational.org and go up and read donations. Or you can mail it in based upon the physical address on EmbraceHopeInternational.org or on the Facebook website. So we thank you for your giving today. And know that God is who he says he is. He'll do what he says he'll do, and he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. I got some unfinished business I need to finish. So, Sister Graham, would you come to the altar, please? Brother Brandon, would you bring you and your entire family with you, please? All right, they have joined the church and, and they have let him go long enough to, <laughs> to get back to the church from his busy job that he's with. And so I uh, just want to say thank you for allowing uh, your family to come and join this house. Sister Graham. Thank you. God has such a blessing for you, such a favor uh, that you're going to be in this house. Uh, the mic is going to be yours. Uh, it is uh, to do the things that God has purposed you to do in this house. Uh, I do want to sit and talk with you because some things he has told me, and I just want to confirm it with you. Uh, tell you, and then you confirm uh, how he's going to handle his business. So with that, I want to give you this plaque. God said, if I be lifted up, yeah. I draw all men unto thee. And so we just going to keep lifting them up and let it do what he do in this yes, house. Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank if I can get everyone, if you would please stand. Remember uh, the church decoration get with Sister Tamara. And she's going to get, raise your hand for me. And she's going to uh, set the church on fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know First Lady Happy. She's just no <laughs> Christian. Oh, my God. My house looks like a winter winter. And I, to, I drive up in there like, is this my name? <laughs> but in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus I thank you for who you are For what you have done in this house That now God we're going to be mindful Of how we are speaking over ourselves We're going to be mindful Lord That this generational cycle We're going to cut it right now In the name of Jesus Our children shall not shall no longer be inundated By the words coming out of our mouths That's going to prevent them From being successful 
They're going to learn your words, God. They're going to yeah. learn your verse. They're going to learn your scripture. That when the heat comes, they'll be able to say what you said, God, to pull them out of that situation. So thank you, Jesus, for what yes. you've done. Thank you for blessing us. Now, Father, as we leave here, bind all mechanical yeah. failure and let them hurt common danger come to us, but keep us covered under your blood. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And glory to peace.